Welcome back to The Patrick Lane Show, where we talk about personal finance, investing, and real estate. And boy, Coinbase came out of nowhere today, didn't they? Let's talk about it and see what happens. Is it going to be a good thing for next week's uh, direct listing or a bad thing? First, before we get into that, smash the like button for me. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the uh, notification bell. We really appreciate your help. It means a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. It just takes a little second. Just barely touch it. There we go. Coinbase put out their uh, Q1 estimate, earning estimates today. And the reason for that is because, you know, next week they're supposed to uh, direct list, which is, uh, if you don't know, is similar to an IPO, except it's not going to be an initial public offering where a bunch of investment banks and insiders set the share price. It's a direct listing, which means that the, there's no creation of new stock. It's the existing stock. And I think Coinbase has about 115 million shares or something like that uh, that they've registered with the SEC that are going to be sold. Uh, and those are existing shares of Class A stock. And they're going to let their current shareholders that own those 115 million shares to offer those uh, directly to the public for sale. And that's going to start next week sometime. So, and, and we really don't know. There's not like an IPO price uh, it's essentially just when it hits the market, it's going to set its own price. So in anticipation of that, of course, uh, Coinbase has got to get all of their numbers together because investors like us, uh, retail investors who are interested in uh, knowing whether or not this is going to be a good company for us to invest in, want to know what the revenue numbers are uh, and the customer base and all those sorts of things in order to decide, is this someplace we want to put our money? So. Coinbase, for those of you who don't know, is a crypto trading app. So think of a Robinhood or a Webull or eToro or Public or any of those, except it is specifically for cryptocurrencies. And of course, the biggest cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. And of course, there's others, Ethereum and some of the other uh, altcoins that you can trade on uh, Coinbase. But obviously, Bitcoin is going to be the biggest a draw to the Coinbase customer. And so, you know, there it's an app just like Robinhood or just like the others where you go and you can buy the uh, cryptocurrencies from them on the exchange. So now going back to the numbers that they've put out, um, you know, the numbers look pretty darn good. They've got 56 million uh, customers who have accounts. They've got, I think in the latest numbers, it was over 6 million uh, monthly transaction users. That means that of the 56 million accounts that are on there, uh, you know, that's 56 million people own some crypto on the platform. But those monthly uh, transaction users are people who have actually traded, uh, either bought or sold within the platform uh, in the last month. And that number was about six or seven million out of that 56 million. So that's a pretty good ratio. And that number is actually important because that's really where Coinbase makes their money is on the trading. So, you know, if you buy a Bitcoin on Coinbase, you make a, a they charge you a fee to make that purchase. And then they don't make any money off of the appreciation of that asset. Right. Uh, so that's how um, Coinbase will make its revenue is from the actual trading transaction itself. So if Bitcoin, for example, is going up and up and up and up, and everybody wants to buy Bitcoin, then they're gonna, they should theoretically have more transactions and therefore more fees on their platform in Coinbase. But what happens if the uh, order flow goes down? What happens if the Bitcoin price goes down? Uh, let's say it goes from 60,000 where it is, or roughly 60,000, down to 30,000. Are there gonna be just the same amount of people buying in and selling out? Or are those Coinbase users going to just sort of sit and do nothing and therefore uh, kill off the revenue for Coinbase? We don't know that yet because we haven't seen sort of the uh, quarter over quarter, year over year numbers to be able to compare and link it to when the crypto prices were up and when they were down. So that's something important that we've got to think about going forward for the long term price and growth of Coinbase. But boy, 56 million uh, active accounts, uh, seven, six to seven million people who are trading on a monthly basis. 
that's a pretty good number and, and it bears itself out as being a good number because their revenue in uh, Q1 was $1.8 billion. Now that's pretty crazy uh, for a startup company to have $1.8 billion in just Q1. And so if you look, dig it a little bit deeper, uh, they let us know that the EBITDA uh, is $1.1 billion, which is, I mean, that's crazy to have an EBITDA that high when your revenue is 1.8. So they're making a good margin. They're making a good profit on those accounts and those trades that are happening on the platform of Coinbase. So uh, what, what does that mean? What are we going to do in the future? Is this uh, Coinbase? Is this a stock that we think is something that's going to be good to buy in the future? Are you going to be buying it? Uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Are you going to be in there on the first days of Coinbase trying to pick up a few shares because you think it's going to grow? And then not only Coinbase, but what happens to the competitors of Coinbase? I mean, think about the Voyager Digitals out there who, uh, you know, have been around for a little while, actually already publicly traded. Um, I think it's on the Canadian exchange. And so, you know, it's, uh, it, that's already out there. It's proven what it's going to do. Is that a really direct competitor with Coinbase? Or has Coinbase just locked up the market because of all the PR and hype? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down below. As far as the numbers go, I mean, you can't, uh, you can't fault what, uh, what Coinbase has been doing. And their numbers prove it out. Because if you think about the volume or the, the total... Um, market cap, the market value of what we're uh, looking at here, privately, it has been valued at somewhere between 60, 70, and $100 billion. And if you think about all of the you know companies that have gone public lately, uh, there's very few of those that are in that range. And in fact, there's very few companies that are um, up and running that we've invested in that are in that $100 billion range. And so um, it's going to be really a, a behemoth of a company if, if the numbers play out the way that they seem to be looking. But I don't know. It, you know the, the price of Bitcoin could crash next week and Coinbase just absolutely gets obliterated on its first week of trading. That could happen too. We just don't know going forward. And we've got to remember that we think that the price of Coinbase is going to be tied to the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but obviously Bitcoin is the big dog on the street. So do me a favor. Tell me what you think down below. Leave a comment. Let me know uh, your thoughts. Is Coinbase a good investment? Is Bitcoin going up or down? Are the two linked uh, to the point where when one lives or dies, the other is going to do the same thing? And do you think Coinbase is going to be rivaled by uh, Voyager Digital, which is already out there uh, and up and running? If you would, Smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video.